Here we have the Teamer Tower deck. This is arguably the third or fourth best deck in Standard right now, just based on results. Obviously, we've got two clear front runners, but this is an alternative. Um, if you're looking for a competitive deck that has lots of game against both Marty Vehicles and the four color Sahili deck, I really recommend this deck. I've been playing it a lot. Um, just played it in Grand Prix, New Jersey. Pretty successful um, in terms of results with it. So just to go over the deck here, um, we've got a three color mana base that is generally pretty consistent. Now sometimes, like any deck, you know there there are problems, especially when you're adding a third color. But we've got a tomb with aether to help smooth out the draws, and then also give us energy, and we've got a couple different ways to use energy, but the main way is the four copies of Dynavolt Tower in the main, so straightforward mana base, we've got some fast lands, some aether hubs, a um, couple lumbering falls, which can be win conditions, can be used on blocking duty, so they are actually relevant. Um, then we've got some removal spells. Of course, four copies of Harness Lightning, just the best energy removal spell the format has to offer. And we can only play four of those, so we have to play a few other removal spells that aren't necessarily as good, but they are still um, serviceable. So Incendiary Flow, you can use that as a great way to just deal with the Scrap Heap Scrounger, Exiling a creature is nice, and it goes to players. Similarly, Shock goes to players, and it's a one-mana removal spell. Just immediately get that Toolcraft Exemplar off the board. Try to stabilize early, save some damage. Shock can help you do that. And it's also a way to disrupt the four-color combo, the Sahili plus Felidar Guardian combo. Um, the one copy of Natural, Les Natural Obsolescence may seem a little bit odd. Um, it's great against Mardu. It's pretty good in the mirror because it gets Dynavolt Towers, Torrential Gearhawks, and it just turns out most decks have artifacts. Even against four color Sahili, well, it's bad against four color Sahili, but you know, you can get a Thopter with it. And of course, you board it out in that matchup. So it's one of those cards where it's, ma it's matchup specific, but it's good. It's very good in the matchups that it's good. Essentially, if that makes sense. Um, then we've got a bunch of counter spells. So this is primarily a draw go deck. At a, at a certain point, you're just holding up mana, looking to counter your opponent's threats. So negate. Not only does it counter planeswalkers and removal and all that card draw effects like Glimmer of Genius, but it also counters vehicles. So it's just a very flexible card. Um, and then. You know, if you're countering a Sahili or Chandra out of the four-color copycat deck, those are the most annoying cards to deal with. So Negate is very important. Then we've also got Horribly Awry. Now, that may stand out as, wow, there's three copies of Horribly Awry. Um, which, yeah, it's a little bit weird. I started with one. or I started with zero, actually. Then I started with, then I went to one. Now I'm at three. Um, because the card is just really strong against four color Sahili, countering Virtuosas, Rogue Refiners, Felidar Guardian, what have you. And then you can sometimes get Scrap Heap Scrounger out of Mardu, and it's just been impressive. Um, anticipate, it's more or less your filler card draw effect. Um, blue control decks want them to smooth out your draws, to find maybe your third land, to find a removal spell. It is a, a way to get what you're looking for, and so that's why it's important. Sometimes you can shave on them. Then we've got the Dynavolt Tower. So this is kind of the staple card of the deck. It's what the deck is known for. You can definitely win without the tower, but once you have a tower in play going, it becomes easy mode. Um, you just got all these instants and sorceries that are making, you know, a tune with energy make four energy. Glimmer of Genius make four energy and so on and so forth. Sometimes you even have two towers in play, and things get a little bit crazy at that point. 
So you can use towers to ping down planeswalkers, to ping down creatures, and they help you get back into games that you're behind in. And a lot of times this deck does start behind, and it's it's just aiming to crawl its way back in to the game, and Dynamo Tower allows you to do that. So you're going to see a trend. There's a bunch of counter spells in the deck. So I've gone with a mix here of Disallow and Void Chatter. Sometimes you really want the Exile counter spell. Other times being able to counter a triggered ability, like maybe a Planeswalker ultimate, is important um, with Disallow. There's four Glimmer of Genius. This is the best card draw in the deck. You never want to sideboard them out. You're able to get energy, you're able to draw cards, you're able to scry. It's everything you want out of a card draw effect in the deck. And then one confirmed suspicions, a bit of a pet card, um, but it's a way to close out games. So not only is it a counter spell, but then you get the three clues. So you're able to draw three cards, you can gear hawk it, which is just insane whenever that happens, because then you draw you get another few clues and you're just you're just drawing infinite cards at that point, and your opponent's just going to be overwhelmed. Um, so I've gone with that as my 5-mana spell of choice in this deck. Then there's 4 Torrential Gearhawk. It's one of, if not the best Gearhawk, I think it and Virtus Gearhawk. There's definitely arguments for both, but Torrential Gearhawk is extremely powerful. It goes so well in this deck because there's so many instants that you can potentially flashback, whether it's removal or counterspell or card draw. Um, once you're playing it, you're normally able to just kind of seal up the game in a turn or two after resolving this card because it just gains you such a big advantage in the game. And it has flash, so if your opponent can be attacking, then all of a sudden you flash it in. And there's not that many removal spells that deal with it besides unlicensed disintegration. So, on to the sideboard. So, after game one, a lot of decks are going to be boarding in artifact removal against you, just for the towers, for the gear hulks. So you have to be aware of that. Um, cards like Release the Gremlins. Your opponent's going to change up their strategy. Maybe go bigger with Planeswalkers like Mardu. Um, or maybe try to play a grindier game with Four Color Sahili with Tireless Trackers. So, just being aware of what your opponent might be up to. And one thing your opponent is likely to be doing is to be boarding out removal spells. Because in game one, a card like Fatal Push, it does nothing against you. Um, so your opponent's just going to board that card out. That's when you can start sliding creatures in. And you'll see how control decks may want to do that and just counteract what your opponent is doing after sideboard. So you see Shielded Aether Thief. Um, many lists may play it in the main. I've opted to play it in the board here. Um, because of what I was saying about removal, you pretty much bore them in in most matchups because they are so good. And just being able to block three power creatures, then you can draw cards with them. They have flash. Your opponent is just going to attack right into them, not knowing what's going to happen. We've got some additional counter spells here. A negate, a couple of dispels. Dispels more or less just coming in in the mirror match. Negate, on the other hand, comes in against Mardu, comes in against... Um, other things as well. Release the Gremlins for your artifacts, artifact based stacks. We have two release, one natural obsolescence in the board here. Then we've got a Radiant Flames, which is really good against four colors of Healy, actually, as just a Wrath effect. And then let's see here, we've got two copies of Whirler Virtuoso. Just kind of rearranging this here. So we got a couple of Whirler Virtuosos as another way to close out games. So you play the Whirler Virtuoso, you can make a bunch of energy, churn out a bunch of Thopters, and it's just an alternate win condition. So been pretty impressed with that as a sideboard option. Okay, then we get to some of our bigger cards here. So we've got Dampening Pulse. This is a 4-mana enchantment. Creatures your opponent's control get minus 1, minus 0. So why would this possibly be good? That might be your first reaction. And then you think, wait a second. 4-color Sahili, how do they beat you? 
They beat you with comboing Sahili plus Felidar Guardian. Okay, Dampening Pulse stops that. They beat you with Whirler Virtuoso. Thopters, Dampening Pulse stops that. And they beat you with cards like Natural State and Release the Gremlins, Artifact Removal. That can't target the Dampening Pulse. So the Dampening Pulse is a really powerful card once you get it into play against four color Sahili. Um, then there's also one Sphinx of the Final Ward. That's for control. Once it's in play, it's pretty much easy mode. Your opponent's counter spells do nothing. Yours are still insane. Um, and then the Confiscation Coup comes in primarily against Black Green. Um, just being able to steal a creature and play that game. So this is the deck. Been happy with this configuration, and I would recommend it in the current metagame, even without any bans having happened.